Hello and welcome to MBKM Models. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow for more great aircraft documentaries and model build videos. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II is an American family of single seat, single engine, all weather, stealth, multi-role combat aircraft that is intended to perform both air superiority and strike missions. It is also able to provide electronic warfare and intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. Lockheed Martin is the prime F-35 contractor with principal partners Northrop Grumman and BAE Systems. The aircraft has three main variants. The conventional takeoff and landing, the F-35A, short takeoff and vertical landing, the F-35B and carrier based, the F-35C. The aircraft descends from the Lockheed Martin X-35 which in 2001 beat the Boeing X-30 to win the Joint Strike Fighter JSF program. Its development is principally funded by the United States with additional funding from program partner countries from NATO and close US allies including the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, Italy, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands and formerly Turkey. Several other countries have also ordered or are considering ordering the aircraft. The, the program has drawn much scrutiny and criticism for its unprecedented size, complexity, ballooning costs and much delayed deliveries. The acquisition strategy of concurrent production of the aircraft while it was still in development and testing led to expensive design changes and retrofits. The F-35 first flew in 2006 and entered service with the US Marine Corps F-35B in July 2015 followed by the US Air Force F-35A in August 2016 and the US Navy F-35C in February 2019. The aircraft was first used in combat in 2018 by the Israeli Air Force. The US plans to buy 2,456 F-35s through 2044, which will represent the bulk of the crew tactical aviation of the US Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps for several decades. The aircraft is planned to be a cornerstone of NATO and US allies air power and to operate until 2070. The F-35 was the product of the Joint Strike Fighter program, the JSF, which was the merger of various combat aircraft programs from the 1980s and 1990s. One progenitor program was the Defence Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA, Advanced Short Takeoff Vertical Landing, which ran from 1983 to 1984. Advanced Short Takeoff Vertical Landing aimed to develop develop a Harrier jump jet replacement for the US Marine Corps and the UK's Royal Navy. Under one of the ASTOVL's classified programs, the supersonic STOVL fighter, the SSF program at the Lockheed Skunk Works conducted research for a stealthy supersonic STOVL fighter intended for both the US Air Force and the US Marine Corps. A key technology explored was the shaft-driven lift fan, the SDLF system. Lockheed's concept was a single-engine Canard Delta aircraft weighing about 24,000 pounds empty. ASTOVL was rechristened as the Common Affordable Lightweight Fighter, the CALF CAF, in 1993 and involved Lockheed, McDonnell Douglas and Boeing. In 1993, the Joint Advanced Strike Technology JAST program emerged following the cancellation of the USAF's multi-role fighter MRF and US Navy's Advanced Fighter attack AFX programs. MRF, a program for a relatively affordable F-16 replacement, was scaled back and delayed due to post-Cold War defence posture easing, F-16 fleet usage and thus extending its service life as well as increasing budget pressure from the F-22 Advanced Tactical Fighter program. The AFX, initially known as the Advanced Attack AX, began in 1991 as the US Navy's follow-on to the Advanced Tactical Aircraft Program for an A-6 replacement. The ATA's resulting A-12 Avenger II had been cancelled due to technical problems and cost overruns in 1991. In the same year, the termination of the Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter NATF, a naval development of the USAF's ATF program to replace the F-14, resulted in additional fighter 
capability being added to AX, which was then renamed AFX. Amid increased budget pressure, the Department of Defense's bottom-up review, BUR, in September 1993, announced MRFs and AFX's cancellations, with applicable experience brought to the emerging JAST program. JAST was not meant to develop a new aircraft, but rather to develop requirements, mature technologies, and demonstrate concepts for advanced strike warfare. As JAST progressed, the need for concept demonstrator aircraft by 1996 emerged, which would coincide with the full-scale flight demonstrator phase of ASTOVLCALF. Because the ASTOVLCALF concept appeared to align with the JAST charter, the two programs were eventually merged in 1994 under the JAST name, with the new program now serving the USAF, USMC and USN. JAST was subsequently renamed the Joint Strike Fighter JSF in 1995 with the STOVL submissions by McDonnell Douglas, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin and Boeing. The JSF was expected to eventually replace large numbers of multi-role and strike fighters in the inventories of the US and its allies including the Harrier, F-16, FA-18, A-10 and and F-117. International participation is a key aspect of the JSF program started with United Kingdom participation in the ASTOVL program. Many international partners requiring modernization of their air forces were interested in the JSF. The United Kingdom joined JAST JSF as a founding member in 1995 and thus became the only tier one partner of the JSF program. Italy, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Canada, Australia and Turkey joined the programme during the concept demonstration phase CDP with Italy and the Netherlands being Tier 2 partners and the rest Tier 3. Consequently, the aircraft was developed in cooperation with international partners and available for export. Boeing and Lockheed Martin were selected in early 1997 for CDP with their concept demonstrator aircraft designated X-32 and X-35 respectively. The McDonnell Douglas team was was eliminated and Northrop Grumman and British Aerospace joined the Lockheed Martin team. Each firm would produce two prototype air vehicles to demonstrate conventional takeoff and landing, carrier takeoff and landing, and short takeoff and vertical landing. Lockheed Martin's design would make use of the work on the SDLF system conducted under the ASTOVL CALF program. The key aspect of the X-35 that enabled STOV VL operation, the SDLF system of the lift fan in the forward center fuselage that could be activated by engaging a clutch that connects the drive shaft to the turbines and thus augmenting the thrust from the engine swivel nozzle. Research from prior aircraft incorporating similar systems such as the Convair Model 200 Rockwell XVF-12 and the Yakalef Yak-141 were also taken into consideration. By contrast, Boeing's X-32 employed the direct lift system that the augmented turbofan will be reconfigured when engaging in STOVL operation. Lockheed Martin's commonality strategy was to replace the STOVL variants SDLF with a fuel tank and the aft swivel nozzle with a two-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzle for the CTOL variant. This would enable identical aerodynamic configuration for the S. STOVL and CTOL variants, while the CV variant would have an enlarged wing to reduce landing speed for carrier recovery. Due to aerodynamic characteristics and carrier recovery requirements from the JAST merger, the design configuration settled on a conventional tail compared to the Canard Delta design from the ASTOVL CALF. Notably, the conventional tail configuration offers much much lower risk for carrier recovery compared to the ASTOVL CALF canard configuration, which was designed without carrier compatibility in mind. This enabled greater commonality between all three variants as the commonality goal was important at this design stage. Lockheed Martin's prototypes would consist of the X-35A for demonstrating COL before converting it to the X-35B for STOVL demonstration, and
and the larger winged X35C for CV compatibility demonstration. The X35A first flew on the 24th of October 2000 and conducted flight tests for subsonic and supersonic flying qualities, handling, range and manoeuvre performance. After 28 flights, the aircraft was then converted into the X35B for STOVL testing, with key changes including the addition of the SDLF, the three-bearing swivel module 3BSM and roll control dust. The X35B would successfully demonstrate the SDLF system by performing stable hover, vertical landing and short takeoff in less than 500 feet. The X35 35C first flew on the 16th of December 2000 and conducted field landing carrier practice tests. On the 26th of October 2001, Lockheed Martin was declared the winner and was awarded the System Development and Demonstration SDD contract. Pratt & Whitney was separately awarded a development contract for the F-135 engine for the JSF. The F-35 designation, which was out of sequence with standard DOD numbering, was allegedly determined determined by program manager Major General Mike Huff. This came as a surprise even to Lockheed Martin which expected the F-24 designation for the JSF. As the JSF program moved into the system development and demonstration phase, the X-35 demonstrator design was modified to create the F-35 combat aircraft. The forward fuselage was lengthened by 5 inches to make room for mission avionics, while the horizontal stabilizer were moved two inches aft to retain balance and control. The diverter-less supersonic inlet changed from a four-sided to a three-sided cowl shape and was moved 30 inches aft. The fuselage section was fuller, the top surface raised by one inch along the centre line to accommodate weapons bays. Following the designation of the X-35 prototypes, the three variants were designated F-35ACTOL, F-35BSTOV, and F-35 CCV, all with a design service life of 8,000 hours. Prime contractor Lockheed Martin performs overall systems integration and final assembly and checkout at Fort Worth, Texas on Northrop Grumman and BAE Systems supply components for mission systems and airframe. Adding the systems of a fighter aircraft added weight. The F-35B gained the most, largely due to a 2003 decision to enlarge the weapon bays for commonality between variants. The total weight growth was reportedly up to 2,200 pounds, over 8%, causing all STOVL key performance parameter KPP thresholds to be missed. In December 2003, the STOVL weight attack team SWAT was formed to reduce the weight increase. Changes included thinned airframe members, smaller weapons bays and vertical stabilizers stabilizers, less thrust fed to the roll post outlets and redesigning the wing mate joint, electrical elements and the airframe immediately aft of the cockpit. The inlet was also revised to accommodate more powerful greater mass flow engines. Many changes from the SWAT effort were applied to all three variants of commonality. By September 2004 these efforts have reduced the F-35B's weight by over £3,000 while the F- F-35A and F-35C were reduced in weight by £2,400 and £1,900 respectively. The weight reduction cost $6.2 billion and caused an 18-month delay. The first F-35A designated AA-1 was rolled out at Fort Worth on the 19th of February 2006 and first flew on the 15th of December 2006. In 2006, the F-35 was given the name Lightning II after the Lockheed P-38 Lightning of World War II. Some USAF pilots have nicknamed the aircraft Panther instead. The aircraft software was developed as six releases or blocks for SDD. The first two blocks, 1A and 1B, readied the F-35 for initial pilot training and multi-level security. Block 2A improved training capabilities, while 2B was the first combat-ready release planned for the USMC's initial operating capabilities. Capability IOC. Block 3I retains the capabilities of 2B while having new hardware and was planned for the USAF's IOC. The final release for SDD 
the Block 3F would have full flight envelope and all baseline combat capabilities. Alongside software releases, each block also incorporates avionics hardware updates and air vehicle improvements from flight and structural testing. In what is known as concurrency, some low rate initial production LRIP aircraft lots would be delivered in early block configurations. In what is known as concurrency, some low rate initial production LRIP aircraft lots would be delivered in early block configurations and eventually upgraded to block 3 once development is complete. After 17,000 flight test hours, the final flight for the SDD phase was completed in April 2018. Like the F-22, the F-35 has been targeted by cyber attacks and technology theft efforts, as well as potential vulnerabilities in the integrity of the supply chain. Testing found several major problems. Early F-35B airframes had premature cracking. The F-35C arrestor hook design was unreliable. Fuel tanks were too vulnerable to lightning strikes. The helmet display had problems and more. Software was repeatedly delayed due to its unprecedented scope and complexity. In 2009, the DOD Joint Estimate Team Jet estimated that the program was 30 months behind the public schedule. In 2011, the program was rebaselined. Its cost and schedule goals were changed, pushing the IOC from the planned 2010 date to July 2015. The decision to simultaneously test and fix defects and begin production was criticised as inefficient in 2014. Under Secretary of Defence for Acquisition Frank Kendall called it acquisition malpractice. The three variants shared just 25% of their parts, far below the anticipated commonality. Of 70%, the program received considerable criticism for cost overruns and for the total projected lifetime cost, as well as quality management shortcomings by contractors. The JSF program was expected to cost about $200 billion for acquisition in base year 2002, when SDD was awarded in 2001. As early as 2005, the Government Accountability Office had identified major Major program risks in costs and schedule. The cost delays strain the relationship between the Pentagon and contractors. By 2017, delays and cost overruns had pushed the F-35 program expected acquisition cost to $406.5 billion, with total lifetime cost, for example, to 2070 to $1.5 trillion in then year dollars, which also includes operations and maintenance. The F-35A's unit cost for LRIP Lot 13 was $79.2 million. Delays in development and operational testing evaluation pushed full rate production to 2023. The single engine aircraft is powered by the Pratt & Whitney F-135 low bypass augmented turbofan with rated thrust of 43,000 pounds per foot derived from the Pratt & Whitney F-119 used by the F-22, the F-135 has a larger fan and higher bypass ratio to increase subsonic thrust and fuel efficiency and unlike the F-119 is not optimized for supercruise. The engine contributes to the F-35 stealth by having a low observable augmenter or afterburner that incorporates fuel injectors into thick curved veins. These veins are covered by ceramic radar absorbent materials and mask the turbine. The stealthy augmenter had problems with pressure pulsations or screech at low altitude and high speed early in its development. The low observable axis metric nozzle consists of 15 partially overlapping flaps that create a sort of pattern at the trailing edge, which reduces radar signature and creates shed vortices that reduce the infrared signature of the exhaust plume. Due to the engine's large dimensions, the US Navy had to modify its underway replenishment system to facilitate facilitate at sea logistics support. The F-35's integrated power package, the IPP, performs power and thermal management and integrates environment control, auxiliary power unit, engine starting and other functions into a single system. The first F-35A AA-1 conducted its engine run in September 2006 and first flew on the 15th of December 2006. Unlike all subsequent aircraft,
aircraft. AA-1 did not have the weight optimization from SWAT. Consequently, it mainly tested subsystems common to subsequent aircraft, such as the propulsion, electrical system, and cockpit displays. This aircraft was retired from flight testing in December 2009 and was used for live fire testing at NAS China Lake. To preserve its stealth shaping, the F-35 has two internal weapons bays with four weapons stations. The two outboard weapons station each can carry ordnance up to 2,500 pounds or 1,500 pounds for the F-35B, while the two inboard stations carry air-to-air -air missiles. The inboard station can carry the AIM-120 AMRAAM AMRAM. Two compartments behind the weapon bays contain flares, chaff and towed decoys. The first F-35B BF-1 flew on the 11th June 2008, while the first white optimised F-35A and F-35C AF-1 and CF-1 flew on the 14th of November 2009 and the 6th of June 2010 respectively. The F-35B's first hover was on the 17th of March 2010, followed by its first vertical landing the next day. The F-35 Integrated Test Force, the ITF, consisted of 18 aircraft at Edwards Air Force Base and Naval Air Station Patuxent River. Nine aircraft at Edwards, five F-35As, three F-35Bs and one F-35C performed flight sciences such as F-35A envelope expansion, flight loads, store separation as well as mission systems testing. The other nine aircraft at Patuxent River, five F-35Bs and four F-35Cs were responsible for F-35B and C envelope expansion and STOVL and CV suitability testing. Additional carrier suitability testing was conducted at Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division at Lakehurst, New Jersey. Two non-flying aircraft of each variant were used to test static loads and fatigue for testing avionics and mission systems. A modified Boeing 737-300 with a duplication of the cockpit, the Lockheed Martin Catbird have been used. Field testing of the F-35 sensors were conducted during exercise Northern Edge in 2009 and 2011, serving as significant risk reduction steps. The F-35A and F-35B were cleared for basic flight training in early 2012, although there were concerns over safety and performance due to lack of system maturity at the time. During the low-rate initial production LRIP phase, the three U.S. military services jointly developed tactics and procedures using flight simulators, testing effectiveness, discovering problems and refining design. On the 10th of September 2012, the USAF began an operational utility evaluation OUE, of the F-35A, including logistical support, maintenance, personnel training and pilot execution. U.S. Marine Corps. On the 16th of November 2012, the USMC received the first F-35B of VMFA-121 at MCAS Yuma. The USMC declared initial operation capability, the IOC, for the F-35B in the Block 2B configuration on the 31st of July 2015 after operational trials, with some limitations in night operations, mission systems, systems and weapons carriage. U.S. Marine Corps F-35Bs participated in their first red flag exercise in July 2016, with 67 sorties conducted. The first F-35B deployment occurred in 2017 at MCAS Iwakuni, Japan. Combat employment began in July 2018 from the amphibious assault ship USS Essex, with the first combat strike on the 27th of September 2018 against a Taliban target in Afghanistan. U.S. Air Force, the USAF F-35As in the Block 3I configuration, achieved IOC with the USAF's 34 Fighter Squadron at Hill Air Force Base, Utah, on the 2nd of August 2016. F-35As conducted their first red flag exercise in 2017. System maturity had improved and the aircraft scored a kill ratio of 15 to 1, 
against an F-16 aggressor squadron in a high threat environment. The first USAF F-35A deployment occurred on the 15th of April 2019 to Al-Dafra Air Base UAE. On the 27th of April 2019, USAF F-35As were first used in combat in an airstrike on an Islamic State tunnel network in northern Iraq. US Navy, the USN, achieved operational status with the F-35C in Block 3F on the 28th of February 2019. On the 2nd of August 2021, the F-35C of VFA-147, as well as CMV-22 Osprey, embarked on their maiden deployments as part of Carrier Air Wing 2 on board the USS Carl Vinson. The United Kingdom's Royal Air Force and Royal Navy both operate F-35B, known simply as the Lightning in British service. It has replaced the Harrier GR-9, which was retired in 2010, and the Tornado GR-4, which was retired in 2019. The F-35 is to be Britain's primary strike aircraft for the next three decades. One of the Royal Navy's requirements for the F-35B was a shipborne rolling and vertical landing SRVL mode to increase maximum landing weight by using wing lift during landing when operating on the carriers HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales. British F-35Bs use ski jumps. The Italian Navy used the same process. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And until next time.